In this lesson, we're going to be solving systems of linear equations by elimination and using systems of linear equations to solve real life problems. So the steps for solving a linear system of equations by elimination are step one, multiply if necessary, one or both equations by a constant. So at least one pair of like terms has the same or opposite coefficients. Step two, add or subtract the equations to eliminate one of the variables. Step three, solve the resulting equation. Step four, substitute the value from step three into one of the original equations and solve for the other variable. Now this will make much more sense once we go over an example. Now I included the question, why can you add one equation to another? And that would work with subtraction too, because subtracting is just adding the opposite. Anyway, if you look at step two right here, we need to add or subtract an entire equation to another equation, okay? So if I had something like 2x plus 3y equals 7, and then negative 2x plus 4y equals 8, step 2 is telling us to add these two equations together. But let's think, why can we add an equation together? If I have just an example equation of, let's say, 2 equals 2, this is a true statement, right? 2 equals 2 is a true statement, okay? And let's say that I want to add something on both sides. I can do that as long as it's going to be the same thing that I add on both sides. So let's say that I add A. So if I add A on the left, add A on the right, I get 2 plus A equals 2 plus A. You could have had A plus 2 there as well. Well, let's say that A is equal to something like this. Let's say A equals 2B, okay? Well, if I went back over here, and I rewrote this as adding A on the left side and then adding 2B on the right side. So if I make this 2B, let's think, can I actually do this? Can I add A on the left side and then can I add 2B on the right side? Well, the answer is yes, because A and 2B are the exact same thing. So as long as I'm adding the exact same value on both sides, then I can add those equations. And the same goes for subtraction. If I'm subtracting the same value on both sides of the equation, then it will work, okay? Now, where does that bring us when we're adding two equations together? I'm gonna erase this really quickly. If I wanna add these two equations right here, 2x plus 3y equals 7y, I can do that because if we just look at the top equation and think, okay, I wanna add negative 2x plus 4y on both sides. Well, negative x plus 4y is the exact same thing as eight. They have the same value, hence this equal sign. So if I add negative 2x plus 4y on the left side, and then I add eight on the right side, I know for a fact that I can do that because all I'm doing is adding the exact same value on both sides. So that would look like this. I would add my x's, which these would cancel. Zero plus seven y equals 15. Okay. And in the next example, I'm going to show you exactly how to use elimination to solve a system of linear equations. For example one, we're going to solve the system of linear equations by using elimination. And I'm just going to rewrite my equations. 3x plus 2y equals 4, and 3x minus 2y equals negative 4. Okay. Now, notice that I have matching coefficients for the x's, and then I have opposite coefficients for the y's. You can actually do this in two different ways. I'll show both of them in just a moment. So if we're dealing with our matching coefficients, since they have the same coefficient, the, the name of this method is elimination. We want to eliminate one of these variables, okay? Well, since they have the same thing, since I have a 3x and 3x, the way I can cancel that out or eliminate those is by subtracting, okay? So to subtract the equation, I'm gonna put parentheses around the entire equation, put my minus sign, so I get 3x minus 3x, which is zero. Here I get 2y minus negative 2y, which is the same thing as 2y plus 2y, which is going to be positive 4y. And then I have 4 minus negative 4, which is 8, because that becomes 4 plus 4, okay? So now what I would do is solve for y. So I'm gonna erase this zero, because zero plus 4y is 4y. And now all I have to do is divide 4 on both sides, and I get y equals 2, okay? And now I have to plug this back in to find my x value, okay? And in the last section, I 
told you guys that we want to find the easiest equation to plug it back into. In this case, uh, I would say that they're the same because these are two standard form equations. So I'm just going to plug it into the top equation, but you could plug it into both as always. So now my top equation, and I'll draw a little arrow here, my top equation is going to look like this. 3x plus 2 times our new y value, which is also 2, equals 4. Okay, And I'm going to scroll up here to solve. This becomes 3x plus 4 equals 4. Now I'm going to subtract 4 on both sides. I get 3x equals 0. And then right here, you could just tell that 3 times 0 has to be 0, so x has to be 0. Or you could divide 3 on both sides, and I get x equals 0 over 3. Mr. G has 0 friends, divides them into 3 groups. We still get 0. So that's our x value. That's our y value up at the top here. And remember that we need an ordered pair for our solution. So this is going to be the ordered pair, 0, comma, 2. Okay. So now we're done with the first one. I'm just going to show you how to start the second example. And if you want to finish it on your own, you can totally do that. But I just want to show you both ways here. So if I scroll back up, I'm going to rewrite this equation again, the system, I should say, 3x plus 2y equals 4, and then 3x minus 2y equals negative 4. Okay. Well, we've already eliminated the three x's, so now let's el eliminate the y's. I notice that the coefficients are opposites of each other, so positive 2 and negative 2. So if they're opposites, the way to cancel out opposites is to add them together. If you add out opposites, they'll cancel out. So now I'm going to add these equations. So I get 3x plus 3x is 6x, and then 2y plus negative 2y is 0. You don't even need to write this plus 0, but you can if you want to. And then 4 plus negative 4 is also 0. Okay? And then you can continue. You'd figure out that x is 0. You plug it back in to solve for y, and you would end up getting y equals 2. And that's how to do it both ways, either adding the way we did it on the right side or subtracting equations is what we did on the left side. Anyway, now we're done. For example 2, we have another system of linear equations to solve by elimination. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite our equation, negative 10x plus 3y equals 1, and then negative 5x minus 6y equals 23. And if you look here, I don't have any coefficients that are the same for my x's or coefficients that are the same for my y's. I have a negative 10 and a negative 5 here for the x's, and a positive 3 and a negative 6 for the y's. Okay? Now, we know that there's two ways to eliminate a variable. Okay, so we can either add the equations together or subtract the equations together. But if I tried that here, neither variable would cancel. Okay, so I need to do something that allows me to cancel out a variable when I add them or subtract them together. What I can do is I can use multiplication to one or both of these equations in order to get myself a coefficient that is either the same or the opposite. And then if I have the same coefficient, I can subtract the equations. And if I have opposite coefficients, I can add the equations. So I notice here that I have a positive 3 and a negative 6 for my y coefficients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this top equation by 2, and then my coefficients for the y's will be opposite. And then I'll be able to add those together, and then I can eliminate a variable. You also might notice that you can multiply this x coefficient by 2 to get negative 10, or you can multiply it by negative 2 to get positive 10. Um, and I'll show you how to start that, but we'll do it this way first with the y's. Okay? So like I said, we're going to multiply the top equation, that's every single term in that equation, by 2. So that is equal to negative 10, negative 20x, and then plus 6y equals 2 if you distribute all the twos to the terms in this equation. Now I'm just going to rewrite this bottom equation underneath here. So I get 5x, sorry, negative 5x, minus 6y equals 23. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these equations together. Okay? So if I add these together, I get negative 25x plus negative 5x is equal to negative 25x. And then here, the 6y and the negative 6y cancel, which is what we tried to do. And then that equals, well, 2 plus 23 is 25. Now I can divide negative 25 on both sides. And I get x is equal to negative 1. Now all I need to do is plug this back into one of my equations to find my y value. So 
it really can be any of these three equations. This one's written twice um, because they're all equivalent in this case. Well, the top two are equivalent and the bottom one will also give us the same solution. So anyway, I'm just going to plug it into this equation, negative 10x plus 3y equals 1. Once again, you could have plugged it into any of them. So I'm going to write negative 10 and then times negative 1 plus 3y equals 1. Okay. So now these become positive 10 plus 3y equals 1. I'll subtract 10 on both sides, and I will get 3y equals negative 9. Divide 3 on both sides, I get y equals negative 3. And now my ordered pair is going to be negative 1, comma, negative 3. So now we finish this one, but I promised that I would show you how to start it the other way if you prefer that way. So I will rewrite these equations on the right side of the screen. So negative 10x plus 3y equals 1, and, and negative 5x minus 6y equals 23. If we wanted to cancel out the x's, what I would do is multiply by 2, or you could do negative 2, but in this case I'll do 2. So I'll distribute it right there, and I get negative 10x minus 12y equals 46, and then I'll just rewrite this equation. Negative 10x plus 3y equals 1. And then since these have the same sign, negative 10x and negative 10x, I want to subtract the equations. So I'll do negative 10x minus negative 10x, which is 0. Then I'll do negative 12y minus 3y, which is negative 15y. And then 46 minus 1, which is 45. And then you can go on and solve the equation from there. But that is both ways of how to start solving this system of equations using elimination. For example three, a business with two locations buys seven large delivery vans and five small delivery vans. Location A receives five large vans and two small vans for a total cost of $235,000. Location B receives two large vans and three small vans for a total cost of $160,000. What is the cost of each type of van? So the first thing that we want to do whenever we're setting up a word problem like this is define our variables. And the question is asking, what is the cost of each type of van? Okay. So we need to assign variables. So I'm going to call x the cost of a small van. So dollars per small van. And then y can be the cost of a big van or large van, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so now that I have my variables defined, now I want to set up my equations. So we can actually set up an equation for both of our locations. If you see, location A receives five large vans and two small vans for a cost of $235,000. So I'm going to write my equation. I'll zoom out a bit. My cost, which is $235,000, is equal to, well, five large vans times y, because that's the price of the big van, or the large van. So it's going to be 5y, and then plus two small vans. So that's going to be 2 times the price of a small van, which is x. So now I can set up my second equation, which for location b, there's two large vans and three small vans, and the cost is $160,000. So I'm going to start writing out 160000 is equal to my two large vans times y plus my three small vans times x. So now I've successfully set up my system of equations and now I just have to solve it, okay? So since this section is all about elimination, I'm going to use elimination. And notice I don't have any common coefficients in this case. So I'm going to have to actually multiply both of my equations here because there's no way that I can multiply only one equation and cancel it out if I'm multiplying by an integer, which I do recommend multiplying by an integer. Anyway, I'm just going to look at our y's right here. You could do the same thing with our x's, but if you have to multiply both equations, you can just multiply to the least common multiple. So for 5 and 2, the least common multiple is going to be 10. So I just have to multiply this bottom equation by 5 and this top equation by 2. Okay, So I'm going to do that. 
So if I have a 2 here, this is going to become a 4x and a 10y. So I have 4x and I have a 10y. And then I'll multiply this as well. 235,000 multiplied by 2 is 470,000. So I'm going to write that over here. So 10y plus 4x equals 470,000. And then I need to multiply this bottom equation by 5. So that's going to become 15x. That's going to become 10y. So 10y plus 15x. And then 5 times 160,000 is going to give me 800,000 because 16 times 5 is 80. So this is going to equal 800,000. Okay. Now, I can easily eliminate by subtracting the bottom equation from the top equation. So I have minus here, 10y minus 10y is 0. 4x minus 15x is negative 11x. And then 470,000 minus 800,000 is going to be negative 330,000. Okay. Now the last step that I need to do is just divide by negative 11 on both sides, and then I'll find x. And I can see that the negatives will cancel. Okay. And then 33 divided by 11 is 3, and then I can just keep the zeros. So that's going to become 3, and then 4 zeros will give me 30,000. Okay, so that's my x value. And then I can plug this x value back in to one of my equations to find my y value. So I'm going to zoom out and look at my equations that I have. And I'm going to pick this equation because I see that I have a 10y and th this ends in a 0, so that's going to be easy to divide. Anyway, I'm going to plug this in, this 30,000 in for 15x. So I'm going to rewrite it on the left. So I'm going to get 10y plus 15 times 30,000 equals 800,000. Okay, so now I'll zoom in on this. So now I have to do 15 times 30,000, which is going to be 450,000. I'll bring down my 8,000. 800,000, I should say. And then 10y. So now I'm going to subtract 450,000 on both sides to get 350,000. And that is equal to 10y. So now I'm going to divide 10, which is the same thing as just crossing out a 0. So I get 35,000 for the large van. So the last step is to include a word answer with our word problem. So I see that x, which is the small van, is 30,000. And then y, which is the big van, or the large van, is 35,000. So I'm just going to write my word answer, and then we'll be done. The small van. costs $30,000 and the large van costs $35,000 and now we're done.